Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents with a word from Hebrew chapter 12, starting at verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also accomplished about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hmm. What weights is the Bible talking about? What kind of weights seem to so easily beset you and me? Well, let's go back a little bit. Let's go down memory lane. You might need your rear view mirror for this one. Some of you are burdened down with worries and fears. Why? Maybe you have abandonment issues. Well, where did those abandonment issues come from? Maybe a mother or a father or both who have laid you aside so they could party through their life and not live up to their responsibility of taking care of you. Ergo, you are encumbered and weighed down with the fear of abandonment. In every relationship you get into, which ends up inadvertently sabotaging your relationships, no matter what kind they are. That's a form of letting the weights mm, beset you. Let's look at another weight. Hmm, let's see now. Let's go down memory lane. All right. Maybe someone used to make fun of you and they hurt your feelings over and over again. And because they hurt your feelings, you live your life very guarded. You make sure you don't let anybody get but so close. Why? Hmm. Because you don't want to be hurt like you were when you were younger. Well, now you're older. You know how to put up your dukes. You know how to sharpen your tongue. You know how to keep people at bay, don't you? Yeah. But what you don't know how to do is let people in. Let them get close to you. Why? Because your life is guarded. Why is your life guarded? Because you have a fear of once again being hurt. That's a weight that so easily besets you because it gets in the way of you having rich, loving relationships. And you end up missing out based on a fear. Let's go down memory lane again. Let's see, what else can we come up with? Hmm, all right. Well, let's see. Oh, you remember that day when the one you loved lied to you? Wow, that hurt, didn't it? And as a result of that person lying to you, you felt betrayed. Oh, no. What are you going to do with that? Ah, I know what you're going to do with that. You will make sure that you play them before they get a chance to play you. So you end up being a person who betrays. Why? Because it's better to betray than to be betrayed, isn't it? When you're looking from your side of the fence. So what you end up doing is hurting others who may have no intention of hurting you. Now, you know what that boils down to? Hurting people hurt people. Now you have turned from the victim into a perpetrator. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. That's letting the weight of betrayal 
so easily beset you as you deal with other people and hurt them for crimes they did not commit. I'm going to stop there for now. You can chew on that as you go down memory lane and examine or re-examine how you may be hurting others based on those sins and weights that so easily beset you. Mm, it's time to heal, y'all. And there's only one who can do complete healing. Going down memory lane. Now, remember that bully? Mm. And remember that other bully? How many were there? Three, four, five? Oh, my. Boy, did they pick on you. Oh, they picked on you big time. They made fun of you. They ganged up on you. They'd snatch things and take things from you, boss you around and make you do things you didn't want to do. And you developed a bitter, 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 bitter spot in your heart. Loaded with that root of bitterness. You don't know if you'll ever forgive them. Because they acted like they never cared how that affected you. You didn't like the fact that they enjoyed making you writhe in emotional agony. You didn't like that. So what did you do? You said you're going to fix the world, didn't you? And you became an overachiever and you grew up and you accomplished many, many, many things. You have a lot of things under your belt, a lot of credentials. Yeah, even a few major titles. But here's the problem. Now that you have authority, now that you are the one with people working under you and you are the adult and you are the the head figure while everybody else is subordinate under you. Now you, you get to do payback, don't you? And you become the bully and you start to punish your workers, your staff. Oh my goodness, they hate to come to work. They hate to see you coming. And you love the power you feel as you usurp your authority over them. Nobody's going to bully you anymore. Now you have turned in to that proverbial bully. And they must look up to you. And you have that sense of importance because nobody can bully you with all the authority and the power you have in your hand. Their lives are in the palm of your hand. Some of you do that to your own children. You bully your children. Mm. You're domineering. You're a tyrant in your own home and nobody wants to come close to you because they fear you isn't that sad how we punish the innocent for the crimes of the guilty that right there is a weight and sin that so easily besets you <laughs> You use your scars. Oh, think about it. Think about it. Many use those scars and turn those scars into a form of a weapon. And we wield that weapon and we attack others before they can attack us. So we live our lives on the offensive. And we wonder why. We're so lonely. We wonder why people don't really like us, but they must respect us. But we don't get the love we want. We don't get the fellowship. We don't get the intimacy we want and need because we're so busy being a weapon ourselves. Nobody can get close to us. Or guess what? They will get hurt because of your weights. 
Oh, okay. I've got to stop. I can keep going on that subject.